Hi, I'm JP Morgan, and today's Slanted Lens lighting lesson is all about softboxes. We're going to teach you two fundamental principles about softboxes that everyone needs to know to effectively use them when you're doing portraits or different lighting setups. So let's get started on the science. What is it that a softbox does? There are two things you need to understand about softboxes to use them effectively. One is the area of coverage of the different sizes of softboxes. The second is, what's the quality of light that comes from the different sizes? How do I apply that to a portrait or a person I want to photograph? First, let's talk about our area of coverage. We taped a 12 foot by 12 foot grid on the wall and then put our soft boxes six feet from the wall. Six feet is about an average distance of where you're going to use a soft box from an individual. Now, once we put it at six feet from the wall, we're gonna look at our different sizes, small, medium, and large, and just see what the different area of coverage is. Here's a still image of our large softbox. You can see it covers about a 12 foot by 12 foot area. There's about a stop to a stop and a half fall off from side to side. Now we see a medium softbox. It also covers about a 12 foot by 12 foot area. The fall off is about the same. Here's something very interesting. As we put up our small softbox, it again covers a 12 foot by 12 foot area. There's a light fall off of about a stop to a stop and a half. Right now you're probably thinking to yourself, no, wait a minute. Shouldn't a larger softbox cover a larger area? Shouldn't a smaller softbox cover a smaller area? The reality is softboxes cover about the same area, regardless of their size. So why different sizes of softboxes? What's the purpose? Well, it's about the quality of light that's manifest within that 12 foot area that makes the difference between each of the different softboxes. Here's our first image. We've taken a large softbox and taken a photograph of our talent. You can see that the light wraps around her. It's very soft. The shadow on the wall is undefined. Now let's look at the medium softbox. The medium softbox, we're seeing a little more defined shadow now. The light is not wrapping quite as much. The quality of the light is a little harder. It's a little more easy to see shadow building on the shadow side of the face and on the background. Now the small softbox. This is much harder. You see a deeper shadow on the shadow side of the face. You see a very defined shadow on the wall. You start to see the shape of our person. When I use soft boxes, I think one of the most useful tools that there is is a grid. When you place a grid on a soft box, it cuts down the area of coverage. Let's look at what that does on our 12 foot by 12 foot wall again. Here's our area of coverage. You can see that it's cut up by one third. Our box is now covering an eight foot area, not a 12 foot area. The reality is on our talent, it's a much more restricted area that it covers. It shows a vignette on the wall, it's a harder light on our talent, but it's very controllable. That's why I love these. On the Slanted Lens Facebook page, you can see all the technical data that we've talked about here today. I feel like we've really gained some great information and insights. We've learned that the area of coverage of the different sizes of softboxes is very similar, but the quality of light is why you choose them. So take that information. Use it in your own work. Send us in your images so we can see them and we can post them on our Facebook page. Just keep those cameras clicking.